Hi, this is Syed Hashimi. One of the problems with creating a web package from Visual Studio is the fact that the web config transforms are actually executed when you create the package. So this actually causes a lot of challenges when you want to be able to create a package and then publish them to multiple destinations because you are not able to leverage these web config transforms. I've created an extension which is available through NuGet called Package Web, and I'll show you how does Package Web solve this problem. So I'm going to install my package through NuGet. So I'll just say install package package web. And this will download the NuGet package and when that happens it will modify your project to have a few things. We won't actually get into the details of that here, but I'll talk about those at another time. So now, I'll just create a uh, deployment package as I normally would. And then I'll browse to the location where the package has been created. So in this case, the package is created in the OBJ folder under debug and we can see I've got my web deploy package and I've also got this ps1 file which is a PowerShell script I can use this script in order to help me automate publishing my package okay now I'm going to invoke the PowerShell script and we'll walk through everything that it does so the first thing that it does is extract out the contents of the web deploy package to a zip file and then it will inspect it to identify any web config transforms that existed in your project when you created the uh, the package so in this case I picked release now I went ahead and performed the uh, the transform now it's prompting for my web deploy parameters that exist on that package. So I'll go ahead and start filling out the values. If you created any custom uh, parameters, they would show up here as well. And it's prompting me for the connection string because all connection strings are created into web deploy parameters by default. Now it's prompting me for my web deploy endpoint information. I was provided this information by my hosting company, so I'll go ahead and start giving the values here. Username, password, okay, allow untrusted. Okay, we can see now it's publishing the content to the destination. Uh, while that's going on, let me actually just run the application locally and we'll take a look at what is the result. So this application just shows the contents of the app settings and connection strings. So in the case for my debugging experience, I've just got connection I've got app settings that point to local host and my connection string says local DB. We can see that the publish has completed. So let me open a browser and I'll go ahead and visit the site. Okay, we can see now that the app settings are no longer pointing to localhost, instead they refer to release.example.com and my connection string is similar. If I were to publish the debug version, it would actually start saying debug over here. So let me show you another feature that we have. Once you publish for the first time with the publishinteractive.ps1, we create a publishconfiguration.ps1 readme, which actually captures all of your content. And if you rename this file into a .ps1 file, then it will automatically get picked up by package web. So I'll go ahead and rename this.
now that I've renamed it, all I need to do to invoke the same publish again is to just execute my publish interactive. So now it won't prompt me for any values anymore. It will simply pick the values up. Now we can see it was able to do a republish using the same parameters and I wasn't required to enter the values again. Alright, well that's the package web NuGet. I hope you guys like it and let me know what's your feedback.